isotopes. Okay, so the number of protons is always the same for any atom of a given element. Always, always, always. But it turns out the number of neutrons can vary a little bit. Okay, so the number of neutrons can vary. And so this is contrary to Dalton's original theory where he said that all atoms of an element are identical. They have the same mass. We now know that that's not true. Now, we didn't just completely ditch Dalton's atomic theory. We modified it. So atoms of the same element have the same number of protons. So we have a word we call isotopes. Iso is a prefix that means the same. So isotopes are atoms that have the same number of protons, but they've got different numbers of neutrons. The number of neutrons that any any particular element has is not easily predictable from the periodic table. But all elements have their own unique percent natural abundance. So here, let's look at neon in this neon sign, this gas here. So this is how neon tends to be. Um, there are three different isotopes. There's neon with a mass number of well, we haven't talked about mass numbers yet. There's what we call neon 20, neon 22, and neon 21. They have different numbers of neutrons. 90.48% of all neon atoms are neon 20. 9.25% are neon 22, and only 0.27% are neon 21. Those percentages can vary a little bit but generally speaking, anywhere on the planet that you collect a sample of neon, the distribution is going to be very, very similar. That's called the percent natural abundance. So how do we, we have actually multiple ways of symbolizing the different elements. One is what's often called a nuclear symbol. At least that's what I've always called it. I don't know that your book really gives it a name at all, but a nuclear symbol. Because we're, we're talking about what's in the nucleus. <clears throat> so X here would be the chemical symbol, the element symbol from the periodic table. Up here, A is the mass number and Z is the atomic number. We talked about the atomic number. It's the number of protons. That's the number of protons. The mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. The protons and the neutrons are the, the particles that have most of the mass. So you count those up, and that's the mass number. Now, personally, I would have, I would have called the atomic number A and the mass number Z, perhaps. I think M might have been nicer. But they didn't consult me when they did this. So I'm sorry. It doesn't make sense. A is the mass number, Z is the atomic number. I will not try to trick you on that on a test. Um, so those three different isotopes of neon that we looked at, he, here are the nuclear symbols for them. So they're all neon. They all have 10 protons. What's different is the total number of protons and neutrons. The way I remember which goes on top, because that's a question. Well, do I put the mass number on top or the atomic number? The number of protons or the number of both of them? Well, if we want to know how many neutrons are in this isotope, we're going to take the mass number, which is the number of protons plus neutrons, and we're going to subtract the number of protons, and that'll give us the number of neutrons. That isotope has 10 neutrons. And so this is one thing I do like. It's like the, it's stacked up so that you can just do subtraction without even using your calculator. So that one has 11 neutrons, and this one has 12 neutrons. Isn't that kind of neat? Just a smidge, teeny, tiny bit neat? So that's one way to indicate um, the isotope. Oh, yeah, we're coming to the other one. So the mass number is the sum of the number of protons and the number of neutrons. To figure out the number of neutrons, you just subtract 
Yeah, I kind of already said that. Another way to um, indicate a, an isotope is to take the chemical symbol followed by the mass number or the whole element name followed by the mass number. So we would call this um, either way neon 20, neon 21, and neon 22. Now these symbols do not give the number of protons, do they? But any decent chemist is going to have convenient access to a periodic table. So if we want the protons, all we have to do is look at the periodic table. It's 10. And then if we want to know the neutrons, we just subtract 10 from each of these numbers to get the numbers of neutrons. So let's do an example. What are the atomic number, the mass number, and symbols for the chlorine isotope with 18 neutrons? A little Wi-Fi glitch there. Okay. So, um, what's the element symbol for chlorine? Cl. Yeah, well, pick a pen. Silly. Come on. Cl. So, they're telling us that it has 18 neutrons. How many protons does it have? 17. We get that off the periodic table. 17 protons. Okay, so what's the atomic number? It's the number of protons. It's, it's the soul or the personality of the atom. It's the number of protons. 17, this is the atomic number. And what's the symbol for the atomic number? Z. So that's Z. And then they want to know the mass number. What would the mass number be? Yeah, you know, we have to add these together, so 35, that's the mass number, and that has the symbol A, and then it's asking for symbols for this chlorine isotope. There are three different ways we can indicate what this is. So we can take the element symbol, and we're going to put the mass number on top, on the left, and the atomic number on the left on the bottom. That's one way to do it. We can also say CL-35 or we can spell out the name chlorine 35. Any questions? Maybe you've heard of uranium-235. Uranium-235 is a particular isotope of uranium that is radioactive. Then we can also answer questions like this. How many protons and neutrons are in the potassium isotope written here? Well, we can get the number of protons is one of those numbers, right? It's 19. So 19 protons. How many neutrons? We've got to subtract. It's all stacked up there nicely for us. 20. Again, this is simple math, but it's just strange and takes a little getting used to. Take some practice.